I had been selected for this very major honor and uh, I was told it was the highest uh, accolade, if you will, that uh, the president could bestow. And I felt very humbled, but also as though I really didn't deserve it. Because I had an MD and a license to practice, uh, even before the first uh, baby was born, I started working in well baby clinics uh, in Montgomery County because my husband was at NIH then doing research. But I would work in clinics two afternoons or three afternoons a week, and a neighbor would take care of the babies. Uh, and it worked out very well. I could do something and, if you will, keep my hand in medicine at the same time as carry out the responsibilities I felt and wanted to uh, carry out with regard to, to my family. So when we moved, from NIH back to the University of Chicago and where my husband accepted a faculty position, I immediately went to the Child Care Society in the City Health Department and continued to work in well baby clinics. Very soon I was told about a clinic for retired children at Cook County Hospital and I worked there for four or five years and then it was discovered that that Down syndrome was related to an extra chromosome and my husband was going to England. I couldn't practice in England, but I thought, well, I, I could use that opportunity to learn how to prepare and study human chromosomes so I could work on the children who were retarded when I returned. I started a research project that I couldn't complete in the time I was in England, so I came back and approached one of my former professors, Leon Jacobson, uh, for uh, a part-time position, and he was an extraordinarily generous individual. He let me come and uh, gave me the resources that I needed, plus a small salary uh, to, to work in the lab, but he was a hematologist and they just discovered chromosome abnormalities in a particular kind of leukemia. So when he would ask me if I would study the chromosomes of some of his patients, I naturally said yes. That was the beginning. It was really a technical breakthrough that, that opened the doors to uh, the discovery that I was fortunate to make. Uh, and in 1970, they developed a new technique that could distinguish individual chromosomes and parts of chromosomes one from another. Whereas previous to that time, chromosomes were stained uniformly and you could distinguish them by size and shape, but not much else. What had been discovered in 1960 was that one small chromosome was too small in patients with a particular type of leukemia. And in looking at those patients who then had more advanced disease and more chromosome abnormalities, extra chromosomes in addition to this small chromosome, which was called the Philadelphia chromosome because it was discovered by Noel and Hungerford in the city of Philadelphia. Looking at the chromosomes now stained with banding could see not only identify the additional abnormalities, uh, but equally I could see that the Philadelphia chromosome wasn't a deletion as had been assumed from its small size, but rather that the piece that was, if you will, missing from the Philadelphia chromosome was actually tacked onto the bottom end of another chromosome uh, due to a translocation. I've never regretted uh, being in science and being research. and and. The exhilaration that one gets from making new discoveries uh, is, uh, is beyond description. Being awarded the Presidential Medal is, is quite, uh, quite remarkable.